And right now it's time for that time when we talk to our special guest. Tonight our special guest is Ian Townend. Many New Zealanders will know Ian from the television shows Dickinson's Real Deal and Posh Porn. Ian is visiting New Zealand on a well-deserved Christmas break where he reigns supreme in his Chelsea store, Antiques Arcade. Ian Towning on the beat goes on. Welcome to New Zealand. Thank All the you. way from, where's that place again? It's called England. It's, it's called England, you yes, know. Yes, wow. Freezing cold, not like oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> and you're out here for how long, Ian? Um, two weeks. Two weeks. Three weeks. And you're just in time to be on The Beat Goes On before you get back to uh, England now. Aren't I lucky? Yeah. Now, look, you're, you're, you're becoming famous. Posh porn, that's a wonderful show. And yes. the other one, which is Dickinson's... Real Deal. Real Deal. You were seen in television in New Zealand. I know. And, uh, <laughs> you've been recognised yet in your... A lot. Oh, wow, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. I think it's lovely. Yeah. You know, people can connect with you mm. when you're wearing dark glasses and shots and, yeah. well, of course, a lot of bling. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that bling wonderful? <laughs> and that's what the shop's all about, isn't it, that you, you have in England? Let's have a, just before we do that, let's just have a quick look at the, um, at the video of, of the shop in England so when people, when you're talking, they know what you're talking wow, about. Wow, yeah, do so you so have it? We'll, look wow. over here, uh, Ian. Meet Ian Towning. They won't look at my wrinkles. <laughs> They'll be too busy looking at the diamonds. <laughs> Owner of one of London's busiest arcades, Bourbon Hanby Antiques. With over 1,500 customers each week, it's an ever-shifting Aladdin's cave of jewels, collectibles, and curiosities. Ian's a homemaker, treasure hunter, and salesman. 2,000 hefty. <laughs> Together with his team, ah, they live a hectic life. Probably you'll get fat and listen to what those people are saying. Yeah. Of bartering, buying, selling and partying. This is antiques as you've never seen them before. Think that 25. Cheap, darling. It's cheap. What a pleasure it's going to bring you. <laughs> well, Ian, what a wonderful world you've got in England there. That's a great job, isn't it? Now, this is your own shop. It is my own shop. Yeah, and, and how long has it been there and whereabouts exactly is it? Well... We've been in Sydney Street for about 21 years, but we've been in the Chelsea area for about 40 years. Yeah. So I'm serving, and my partner Les Barrett, are serving third and fourth generations in families, mm. which is lovely, you know. And it's collectibles, it's jewellery, uh, souvenirs, it's everything, Absolutely isn't it? Absolutely yeah. everything, from Picasso's, Renoir's, yeah. to jewellery in millions. Yeah. And it has to shine. It has to be bling. <laughs> oh, it has to be bling. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Ian, when this word bling first came onto our uh, consciousness, which is, what, 10, 15 years ago, um, youth must have thought, wow, I love the word, and then that's the world I'm going to get into? Or Would you object to it? <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, friends of mine say, if I'm not wearing anything, mm. they say, what's up? You're just brassed. I said, no, darling, just hadn't had yeah. time to decide what to wear. <laughs> so if you uh, went out one morning and you accidentally forgot to put some bling on, would you feel naked? Without Absolutely your naked. Yeah. I would never leave. <laughs> 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 you know, we have had got builders. We live on a very nice private estate yeah. in, in, in England, yeah. in Surrey, which is very beautiful. And we have a lot of people renovating the properties and doing them up and yeah. things like that. And what has happened is, I don't think about it. So I go out into the garden to do some pruning or whatever, yeah. covered in bling, yeah. and they look over and they say, Ian? And I say, yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and they're quite shocked. <laughs> but it's me. Yeah. You know, that's how I've always been, yeah, yeah. and I'm not going to change. Mm. You know? It's like the other day. You know, I walked into the toilet, <laughs> <laughs> heavens forbid, and it was full of these men, you know, yeah. and they're saying, the ladies is that way, and I said, is it really, <laughs> you know, and they said, oh my God, it's him, <laughs> and it, they dispersed, yeah. you know? it's so funny, I don't yeah. understand why um, they can't accept it. Let's go back um, to that wonderful day that... Ian Towning entered the world. What day was that? How long the ago? The 9th of January, 1948. 1948. That's one year after I was born. Wow. wow. That's amazing. Now, let's look at England at that time. Um, pretty <laughs> depressed, pretty grey. Second World War just finished. And what, what do you remember of your childhood? 
when I remembered my childhood. Yeah, yeah. And, what, and whereabouts was that in England? It was in India. Oh, I was in born India. in India, to brought up in India, educated in India, mm. and I loved it. Well, what was mum and dad in India? My father was in the Indian Army. Yeah. My mother was a very lazy housewife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She never lifted yeah. a finger, too many yeah, servants. Yeah. <laughs> well, at about the same time, Cliff Richard was um, yes. doing that same journey, wasn't he? He came from the same town as me, like now, yes. Really? I even know where his house is, yes. That's fascinating. Yeah. And he's about our age, isn't he, Cliff Richard? A little bit older. Bless. I think yeah. make him older. <laughs> make him older. <laughs> so you, you ended up in England at what stage? Uh, I ended up in England 43 years ago, 44 years ago. Yeah. I came on a holiday from Australia, where I went from India to Australia. Australia, yeah. And then decided, my parents decided, you know, Indian families, mm. we're going to die, we're getting old, you must come and see us. Mm. So I decided to go and see them. And I went there for six months, and then I met my boyfriend, my mm. current boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. you've been Leslie married all Barrett, the time. Yeah, and we yeah. got married, yes. Mm. And we've known each other 43 years, mm. and never went back. Wow. I go on holidays, mm. you know, and I'm g I have a lot of friends in Australia. So when did you decide, uh, look, I need a job. I can either be an accountant, a rocket scientist, join the army, or be what? what? What did you decide to do? You'll be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I work for an engineering company called an Ready, engineering mm -hmm. company, yeah. called Ready Mix Concrete, yeah. <laughs> building these big spinning <laughs> articles. Yeah. I knew nothing about them, yeah, yeah. to tell you honestly. I had a wonderful boss who was a great guy, mm. uh, Mr. Gr uh, Grantshaw. Mm. And eventually I thought, this is ridiculous. You mm. know, I was buying antiques. Yeah to bring back to, to Australia. And Les, my partner said, why are you buying all this stuff? Yeah. So there was so much of it. Mm. Something had to be done about it. Yeah. So he said, why don't we go and look at some antique fairs? So I started doing an antiques fair where I sold plates for seven pounds, which I bought for two pounds. <laughs> I bought cups and sauces for three pounds, which yeah. I sold for 12 pounds. Yeah. You know, and that was the beginning was of the beginning. our relationship yeah. and our business. Mm. You know? And I grew from like, what can I say, like 200 pounds mm. to now a very wealthy situation. Yes. So d is mum and dad uh, still with us, or are they no, gone? No, they've yeah. both gone. Yeah. And they loved everything. You know, they loved the way we had progressed. They backed us all the way. They were and wonderful they were, parents. And they loved what you, when you got into uh, antiques. Oh, and, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. We were surrounded by antiques in India, you mm. know. Uh, it's a wonderful country, and mm. it's full of culture, and full of amazing things. So, of course, you know, when, when you come to, to like, when I came to Australia, it was quite funny. <laughs> I'm talking, you know, many years ago. They said, do you have elephants in alliance running around in the street? I said, oh, yes, we do, yes. <laughs> you know. And you speak English? I said, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> when did you learn? I said, on the plane coming here. <laughs> you know, it's like my Indian language. Yeah, I yeah. speak it fluently. That's Hindi, is it? Is it Hindi? Hindi and Urdu. Yeah. And when I get into a cab in this country, and they say to me, you know, what are we doing? Where are you coming from? And suddenly I'll blast them in, my, in our own language. In Hindi, yeah. In yeah. Hindi. And yeah. they say, wow. Yeah. I s you speak the language. I said, of course I do. Yeah. I said, I took a, tr a crash course in it. 24 hour crash course. <laughs> 24 hours. Wow. But it's yeah. so perfect. Yeah. I said, yes, you know, I'm, quite <laughs> I'm, clever. I'm very clever. <laughs> <laughs> believe that, believe everything. <laughs> Now, and of course, um, uh, you know, you're, uh, many of us watch a, a Bollywood movie and we think, God, I'd love to know what's going on in that movie because it's full of colour and full of dancing and full of great songs. Amazing. Some of those Indian songs are beautiful, aren't Fabulous. they? Fabulous. Well, you can, you can understand all those Bollywood movies, can't you? And Luckily. Do you watch them or is that uh, too close to home? I hardly watch anything. Yeah. I don't even watch myself. Oh. I would be a bitch if I watched myself. <laughs> <laughs> I would rip myself yeah. to shreds. Well, you, I hope you're going to watch this when you get back I to definitely it. will. I can't oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> when did you get the sense that, um, you know, you'd be selling the plates for uh, an extra couple of pounds, but... Um, it went up different levels. When when did you get that feeling that wow, uh, you know, the, the shop that you're in now, I mean, it's it's highly successful, isn't it? So it's extremely uh, when, successful. When did that all happen? Well, what happened was we 
had to make a decision as to where we were going in the future. Mm. So I, I decided that, okay, this is going to be my partner for the rest of my life, yeah. which has worked very well. Because I have him under the thumb. He thinks I've, he's got me under the thumb, but you know, let them think like that. And um, so we decided we'd do a little stand in an antiques arcade, which was mm -hmm. called the Chelsea Antiques Market. It was the very first market ever in what London. What year was that? About in the 80s or the 70s? In, no, it was in the 70s. 70s? A yes. little market 72, stall? 72, I think it was. A little market stall in Chelsea. Yep. That's it was where no it's bigger started. than this area. Yeah. I had nowhere to. Sta sa sit. Yeah. I used to sit on the floor, I had the shelves behind me, mm. and I used to sell and sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd come and they'd strip it. Wow. It was amazing, you now, know. I'd say it was your personality that was the great factor. You know, you've you got a friendly, outgoing, inclusive personality, <laughs> and people would warm to that, wouldn't they? I think what it is about business is that, you know, if you want to be successful, You've got to give, mm. and you've got to be happy, and you've got to entertain somebody. Yeah, all those you are. You it's know, very important. Yeah, yeah. Very important. You know, people say, what is the success in your marriage? What is the success in your business? Well, you know, when people come to me, even if I haven't sold a thing for a, for a week, mm. I say, darling, it's booming. Mm. You know, you go and say, how's the business? Oh, it's terrible. No, oh, I haven't sold anything for a week. Do I want to hear yeah. this? No. Yeah. I want charm. I want excitement. I serve champagne in my shop. You know, I'm bubbly, I'm, I run bubbles in my shop. You could teach me, see, I've got face television, so people could say, how's face television going, Jared? And I say, oh, it's booming. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Have I learned a lesson today? <laughs> <laughs> I have, so we all learn it's, every day. It's booming. Every so day. Now this, it just grew from this little uh, yep. Chelsea market, uh, yep. and then you got the big shop and uh, just grew and grew. And, and just, it's just gone and gone on. But what happened and you while, made many millions of friends and they came back to see you. And, uh, we're very lucky, yeah. you know. We have friends who come, they started as clients, mm. None of them are clients. Yes. I always say, my shop is my stage. Yes. And all my clients are my mm. audience. They're wonderful. I love them. They get angry. I get angry. <laughs> you know, they bitch with me. I bitch with them. Yeah. I know all their personal lives. You yeah, know, yeah. I never talk about this. Yeah. You know, I could destroy one marriage after another if I wanted to. <laughs> if I said I was going to write a book, there'd be suicides mm. everywhere in London. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> They'd be jumping off Tower Bridge or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's a case of learning to be private, mm. learning to respect them, learning how to handle them, and that is so, mm. so important. Okay, not everybody has a good day mm. every day. You know, even I have an off day. Yeah. And I simply say, it's 12 o'clock, I need champagne. <laughs> no. And it's there, you know. 12 o'clock, I need champagne. Yes. I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, what about a uh, little bit of politics? Um, mm. We haven't got much time. I, I, we could talk for hours, but uh, Brexit. Yes. Uh, uh, were you a, a Remainer or a Lever? To tell you honestly, mm. I don't care a damn about politics. You don't worry about politics? No, I don't. Because I always think, I've got a lot of politicians who are my clients and friends, mm. very close mm. friends. Those, yeah. And they always say, Ian, what do you think? I say, darling, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> you know, I give the government what they want. I keep what I want, yeah. and everybody's happy. Yeah. You know, they make their rules. They tell you what to do. You do what they want them to. They do. You do what they want them to do. You pay your taxes. You pay mm. your bills, and just get mm. on with it. You know, all this thing about Europe, it hasn't changed my shop. No. My shop now is busier than it has ever been. Mm. The last few weeks before I came away. I was screaming almost. It's so busy. And I'm saying, I've got lists to do. I've got things to do. It was one point, at 10 o'clock in the morning, there was a queue. Yeah. I'm thinking, they're taking the piss. You know, yeah. this is ridiculous. Yeah. It was packed with people. Wow. You know, and I think what you've got to understand, currencies are changing. Mm. Levels of people who are buying and selling are changing. And yes, of course, there's a lot of poverty in the mm. world. And that poverty, you try and help it. Mm. But how much can you help it? Yeah. You know? Look, um, two more things to talk about, because we're going to talk about your bling, which is wonderful. And um, also, how you got to come to New Zealand. Um, 
had you been thinking of visiting New Zealand and how did it come about? And then you've got a wonderful friend in New Zealand called Martin Leach from the Ponsonby News. So uh, start, where, where did the thought to come to New Zealand come from? Well, the thought to come to New Zealand developed with these two lovely ladies who came into the shop. Mm. And we get visitors, about eight or ten visitors from New Zealand every week in oh, the shop. Yeah. That's quite a lot of people from New Zealand. They come, they buy a little token, you know, 50, 60, 80 pounds, whatever. Mm. They take photographs, they have a glass of champagne with me, mm. and it's lovely, you know. And so I thought, I know Martin Leach. He's a really nice guy. I talked to him a lot on the phone mm -hmm. at ungodly hours of the day and yeah, night because of the yeah. difference in time. Yeah. And so I thought, let's go there. It, just like that. Yep. Let's go to New Zealand. Yep. And so we booked it. And I said, yeah. it's booked. That's it. We're going to do it. Yeah. You know? And it, it is a lovely country. Yeah. And it needs to be seen. Mm. And the people here are very friendly. The mm. food is fabulous. The yeah. wine is amazing. Yeah. You know. And it, <laughs> And of course, you'll be coming back. This is not the f definitely. Oh, good on you. Good definitely. On you. So uh, now, for our for our um, viewers, Martin Leach has been on the beat goes on, and he has Ponsonby News. Yes. And uh, uh, he's a very good friend in New Zealand. Well, that's where you're starting from, isn't it? So from then on, it, it, it it's just out developed like that. And thanks to Martin, he's introduced yeah. me to a lot of producers and directors yeah. from different shows and yeah. different programs, and you know, from radio and whatever. Mm. And I think he has been very supportive on this particular yeah. trip, the first trip. Now, to finish <laughs> off, uh, Ian, and I must say it's been great talking to you. Thank um, you. Let's look at the bling. Um, mm. Now, does it change every day or these are your favourites? <laughs> <laughs> very good question. You know, I w when I was coming here, I had put all my jewellery out yeah. and my jewellery has to match my clothes for the day. Yeah. Okay. So... My partner, Mr. Leslie Barrett, yeah, yeah, says yeah. to me, are you taking all that with you? I said, I never go with less. I've yeah. reduced it. You know, he said, you've reduced it. He said, Ian, cut down. I said, I have cut down. Then I forgot about a piece, yeah. <laughs> a big necklace, which I'm going to wear with Ma yeah. when I see Martin Leach yeah, next yeah. time. And he said, you're mad. Yeah. But you know, everywhere in the world I go, mm. I'm known for my bling. Customs officers around the world. It's your trademark, isn't it? Yes, it is it's my trademark. Yeah. But look, that ring keeps catching my eye. That's a beautiful ring. Tell us the story about that ring very quickly. This uh, was an amazing story. It was brought by a lovely couple mm -hmm. to a show on Dickinson's Real Deal. And it was taken to one of the experts, whoever yeah. the expert was, I don't know. And he said, no, it's not worth doing. And they were shocked. Oh, they were ter good. They're absolutely yeah. totally shocked. Yeah. So they go and sit down, and they, they sat waiting for me to finish the, the day's work uh, at Dickinson's Rail Team. And as I was leaving, we were all packing up and taking everything mm. out. This lovely lady said, excuse me, Ian. I said, yes. <laughs> we have something to show you. I said, yes. The, the, the and people, it was the ring. It was yeah. this ring. Yeah. And they didn't want to show it. And I said, why didn't they want to do it? They said, it's not worth doing. I said, well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you 50000 for it now. $50,000. Or pounds, which pounds. is double. Yeah. yeah. It's right pounds now. tonight. I bought it. Yeah. It's fabulous. I mm. love it. It's untreated. It's natural. It's beautifully made. Wow. You know, it's beautifully yeah, made. Yeah, it kept, kept catching my eye. So, uh, Ian, um, when you walk out from your house in the morning, <laughs> just add it all up. What, what, would, what would all the bling be worth? Oh my uh, God. Just a quick figure, no, not it's exactly. Anywhere between 150,000 to a million. That you're wearing at the moment. At the moment? Yeah. Oh God, I don't know, I haven't calculated yeah. it. <laughs> but at least $100,000 if the ring's worth 50. Minimum. Yeah. yeah. And that's pure gold or is it? Yeah, that's luck? pure gold. It's all gold. Oh, that, wow. That's a very nice bracelet I like. Gosh. I like my diamond clips because I wear yeah. them a lot. Yeah. This was my cocktail ring, mm -hmm. and I converted it into a necklace because every time I went to pick up glasses, I knocked all the glasses <laughs> off. <laughs> all the champagne went flying. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Ian, we've got to finish, but um, I think we should invite every New Zealander that's watching this program, if they, um, if, uh, they come to London, where will they find you in London? And uh, come in and say hello, and they saw you on The Beat Goes On, and um, you'll give them a free $50,000 ring. house. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Love you all. So, so what's, the, what's the address of the... Uh, how would you get to the shop in England? It's uh, very simple. Or the store. 
you know, it's very simple. Yeah. It's right on the corner of King's Road and Sydney Street in Chelsea. Yeah. And if you just Google my name, it all comes up. Yeah. You know, there it is, you know, the bling queen of Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, you're a breath of fresh air for a, for a wonderful you. summer's day here Thanks in New Zealand. So Thank you, Leonard. Thank, Thank you so much for having us here. Bye-bye.